In this GeoMapApp tutorial on the Ocean Floor Drilling Portal, we're going to explore the functionality that allows us to access the physical and chemical measurements and datasets that were collected for recovered cores, as well as core photos and descriptions. For this example, we're going to use hole 103-638B. This hole, drilled on the Iberian margin, is shown by the red dot in the map here. To activate the physical and chemical properties data function, we click on this symbol down in the table toolbar here. Depending on exactly which data types were collected for the recovered cores, the upper part of this window may look a bit different. Here we have one drop down menu, but in other cases we may find two drop down menus, like this. but we'll see that we have identical functionality in either case. So for now, let's close this other window and go back to our original hole. Before exploring the different types of data available in this interface, let's have a look at the layout of the window. The depth in meters below the sea floor is given in three places over on the left here, in the middle here, and over on the right. The grey rectangles over in the left show the location of individual cores. The number of the core is given by the small white numbers. Next comes information on the epoch and stage. Then here we have two columns containing small rectangles. The column on the left indicates the position within the core for which we have core photos. And the column on the right, this one here, shows the position within the core for which we have a core description. If we forget which column is which, then we can click the buttons at the bottom, Photos, to illuminate that column, and Core Descriptions to highlight that one. We remove the highlighting of those columns by clicking on the buttons once more. Let's say we're interested in looking at photos and cores at this level within the core here. Clicking on the rectangle in the left column, here, brings up a core photo in PDF format and we can zoom in to see more detail. And clicking on the corresponding rectangle in the core description column will bring up the core description, like so. The main part of the window presents a graph of that particular data type. Let's now have a look at some of the different data types available to us in this interface. Under the drop-down menu at the top of the window, here, we see the categories of physical and chemical parameters that have been measured for this recovered core. As an example, let's have a look at some of the density parameters that were measured. We select density from the menu, and by doing so, a second drop-down menu has appeared here, showing the different data measurements available to us. In this case, we have the bulk water content, the bulk density, the grain density, and the porosity. We can look at the actual data values that were used to create the graph. To do that, we click the View Data button here, and a window appears which contains the tabular data. In this case, we have five columns, the depth in meters below the sea floor, the water content, the bulk value, the bulk density, the grain density, and the porosity. In order to save this table of data, we'll close that and we click on the Save Data button here. And in the navigation window that appears, we select the location in which to store the file. In order to explore the Add Graph functionality offered by the button here, we switched holes to 198-1209A, a hole located in the Western Pacific, shown here. We switched because this hole has a more complete data set than the first hole we looked at. First, we notice that there's only one column where the photos and core descriptions normally are. And if we click on the buttons at the bottom, clicking Core Description, nothing is highlighted, so it's not the Core Description column. Clicking on the Photos, shows that it's actually the Photos column. So for this particular core, there are no core descriptions available. Let's remove the highlighting by clicking this button, and we'll look at some graphs. 
Let's bring up our first data set of interest. For example, it could be the grape gamma ray density. We go to the drop down menu, find the grape item, and there's the graph. In order to compare this graph to another data set, we go to the add graph button, and in the small window that pops up, we choose the quantity we're interested in. It could be the porosity value, for example, so we go to the density, and in the second drop down menu that appears, we choose the porosity value. And here we see that the two values are plotted side by side. Notice that as we move the cursor in the graph window, the red horizontal line gives us a reference across the data sets. If we wish to add a third graph for comparison, let's just move this window out of the way so we can see the small drop down menu that will pop up when we hit the add graph button. There it is. And in this case, let's look at one of the color index values. So we go under the CIE lab menu item and choose the one we're interested in. Let's choose B. And when we look at the window, here we have all three quantities plotted side by side. Any of the additional graphs can be cleared by clicking the small black X button in the top corner. So in this manner, we can compare different data sets side by side. Lastly, we close the physical and chemical properties window by hitting the close button down here. More information on GeomapApp can be found at www.geomapapp.org.